All right. Welcome back to Culture Cast. Uh, we are checking right now. I think it's episode 18. It is episode 18 of Culture Cast. I still am not prepared for that. Never am, never will be. But that's the fun of it, you know. Uh, we haven't recorded since the Damian Lillard trade uh, last Thursday. That was a huge deal. Uh, and from there, the only thing that had happened was the Drew trade. So we decided to kind of package it together with all the stuff that's happened so far. Um, and that is what we will be starting with. But we will also be getting into Devin Vassell's big contract extension with the San Antonio Spurs. Um, Peyton Pritchard's shocking four-year, $30 million deal with the Celtics to stay. Uh, Cameron Payne's one-year deal with the Bucks. They continue to just build on uh, you know, what started off as an atrocious offseason into a great one. Yeah. Um the James Harden situation in Philly, that's weird. I mean, he shows up to training camp. They talk about Ime Yudoka, and, like, they almost offered him a match. There's a ton of stuff. We'll get into that. Um, and then the first couple of preseason games, we've got the Wolves and uh, the Timberwolves and the uh, Dallas Mavericks, their couple games, their little series in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and then the Warriors preseason opener against the Lakers. Um, Chris Paul's debut with the team. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're going to open here with the Drew Holiday trade, uh, breaking it down. The Celtics are trading to the Portland Trailblazers, which that was the team that Drew got traded, uh, traded to the Celtics trade, Robert Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, the 2024 Warriors first round pick that's been moved a few times. Now the 2029 unprotected Celtics first rounder, uh, and that's it. So Getting off of Drew's contract, you get a couple picks here. For a first round pick, a 2029 unprotected first from Boston. I like that. That's probably going to hit hard uh, Good. in that year. I mean, yeah. again, we've talked about the Celtics contract situation. You'll be yeah. looking at an aging Tatum, an aging, uh, an aging Jalen Brown. That's rough. That's going to be a rough time for the Celtics, I think. Um, and then Robert Williams, potentially, uh, you could potentially strike gold. You know, we've talked about Robert Williams having a lot of injury issues with the knee, but, you know, the dude was named Time Lord for a reason. Like, the, he's a monster when he's healthy. One of the best rim protectors uh, can just jump out of the gym. Uh, and then Malcolm Brogdon, kind of, it's funny. They went from Drew Holiday, who's a good trade asset, to Malcolm Brogdon, who's another good trade asset. So yeah. uh, I can imagine we're going to see Malcolm Brogdon move. He might be a deadline move, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, we'll start with that. What are your thoughts on the trade? Yeah, man. So I think this helps the Celtics in a different type of way. I You're getting a guy which isn't the most strongest playmaker, but he's a very serviceable playmaker. And he's a leader. I, I think this team that the Celtics have, they need someone like Drew. He's a, I, I'm kidding, he's a replacement for Marcus Smart, too. That's something I also yeah. need to mention. He's a, good, he's a great replacement for Marcus Smart. He is probably far and away – one of the best point guards defensively in the league. We we know this. We've said this. He is he's known for his defense. He is marquee on that. He is a solid scorer. He's going to give you way significantly better scoring than Marcus Smart. Way yeah. more consistent. He's going to be a great leader in the locker room, which I think Marcus Smart was. And I've heard things where he might have argued with a few teammates and such, which happens. It's a basketball team. But Drew Holiday, no one's ever questioned his leadership. No one's ever questioned him as a person. He is phenomenal for this team. I like it a lot for them. I think this kind of puts them back up for me. I personally think they're not that far from the Bucs now. This is going to help them compete a lot more with the Bucs. And I think they kind of closed the gap a little bit with this trade. Now, for the Portland side, I love it. I, I think this was this is a great set of assets you get. Like you said, Malcolm Brogdon, he's going to be gone at the deadline. There's going to be a desperate team that's contending yeah. that's going to love to have the sixth man of the year on their bench. He is a phenomenal, efficient point guard that is probably one of the best in the league as a backup. So, I, I it's just a trade that keeps on giving for them, and then they can maybe yeah, put exactly that. It's like it, it, there's a lot of moves they can make with this trade, and even if Time Lord doesn't work out, ship him off. You get more assets for him. I mean, Time yeah. Lord's phenomenal, and if even if Aiden doesn't work out, you have Robert Williams as a backup right there. I don't know. I, I think they have an interesting. I I did read something <laughs> that DeAndre Aiden might play the power four this year, and. That's where he little, wants to play, yeah. Yeah, he said he's meant to be a power forward. Well, if if that's so, and he plays like significantly better there, then why not? I mean, 
Yeah. They, they, the Portland has a lot of options right now, and I think they're all great options for them. I think this team is built right, and they've done it really well this offseason. I have no complaints from Portland. I think they did phenomenal for the situation they were put in. I don't think they could have done any better. Yeah, I, I like it too. Like you said, I don't think they could have done it better. Um, I You know, the interesting thing about DeAndre at the four is there's a, there's a world where we could see, you know, again – we, t- we were talking before we started recording about the Mavericks and just this like major lack of rim protection. I know they added lively Dwight Powell, not a good defender. Um, Maxi Kleba though, if Robert Williams is having himself a season, if he's healthy and everything, I yeah. could see a, uh, I could see a scenario where Mavericks in Portland swaps Maxi Kleba for Robert Williams, because again, if you throw Aiden at the four and then you have Maxi as a stretch at the five, who's also a good rim protector. Yeah. Portland looks really good. Uh, Cause Jeremy Grant's already a really, uh, a really strong three and D forward um, yeah. putting him next to those guards. And like you said, with Malcolm, there's going to be a desperate team. Someone's going to overshoot on Malcolm. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a situation like we've seen with other guys where Malcolm just says, I'm not playing. This is bullshit. And he just sits out. He doesn't seem like the type of dude to do that. So I think he'll probably play, Um, but he's just Mr. Consistent. He's always solid. There's nothing really like wrong with Brogdon's game. I think the funniest thing with getting Drew, if you're Boston is, you know, you were talking about Marcus Smart. Drew is essentially just Marcus Smart and Malcolm Brogdon combined into one player. Virtually, yeah. Um, But with a, but with more of Malcolm Brogdon's personality and he's got a ring. You know, so I don't think they've had anyone on that team that's won a championship. Yeah, I, I, I could I'm be wrong, you. but I don't think there is. And now you've got a guy who has one. Um, and it was 2021. I don't know if that means anything uh, to anyone in terms of like, you know, asterisk. I don't really think there is, but yeah. someone may say so. I still think having a guy who's won a championship that provides something. That, you know, yeah. someone who knows how to get over that hump. Um, and you were talking about this puts them over the you think this kind of puts them over the edge. My issue with Boston is it's not like we've talked about they need a point guard. The issue yeah. isn't even that they need a point guard just to have a point guard. It's that they need a point guard to be a point guard. The issue yeah. is, is they have a lot of these guys who become third, like essentially tertiary ball handlers. Yeah. Like if you get Drew Holiday, but you keep the ball on Jason Tatum's hand or Jalen Brown's hand, you're, you're in the same spot. Player. Exactly. Because yeah. yeah. the biggest issue they have is turnovers, pacing, yeah. and IQ. Those are the three biggest issues Boston has always had, regardless yeah. of if Kyrie was there, Kemba was there, uh, Marcus Smart at the point guard, Malcolm, it doesn't matter. The yeah. same issues are there. So uh, I think this is a big season where – all three of those, or both of those guys, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, need to look themselves in the mirrors and say, you got to stop giving us 30 touches and keeping us at the top of the league with usage rate. Like, yeah. Drew is a great facilitator. Like you yeah. said, he's a consistent scorer. He's more efficient than Marcus Smart. He could yeah. score from all three levels. He's got the mid-range. He even has a post game as a point guard, which Smart yeah. was kind of developing. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like what Drew brings, but yeah, it's just, I think to me, before we, before I say that they're up there with Milwaukee, yeah. to me, I got to see if they're going to change how they operate because that's the biggest thing in, in my yeah. opinion. I, I, you know, because again, if you just shove Drew in the corner or, you know, no Drew gets like 10 touches a game, then yeah, it's like, why even trade for him? You're just, yeah. if any, all you did was just open up a bit of cap space, but for you know who who really cares at that point um but yeah big trade there and I, again for portland i don't think they could have done much better like they have all the power in the world to to make this team whatever the hell they want uh, yeah. a lot of guys with trade value they're getting more picks they're stocking up a bit on the draft capital it's looking good for them and uh, again you know blazers fans rejoice like this is a good thing it's yeah you needed to get to this point where you can just stop saying, yeah, we're contending right now. When it's like, you're not ready. Just, you know, you have the, you have the ability to choose at the moment, which direction you want to go in, but 
there's no rush. There's no yeah. like, you know, like, let's just do it to do it. You've got, you've got options. So um, it's nice to see uh, and hope all goes well, especially for Robert Williams, man. That dude has just not gotten a break from injuries with his knees. So, yeah, man, it's, it, it, yeah, he's been in a tough, very, very tough situation over the last few years. And it, it's tough to see that because, yeah, he's he's a phenomenal talent. Great defensive player, obviously. Yeah. I feel like he's been in the deep boy conversation in a few years. So hopefully we can see him a, a good year out of him, a, whole, a full healthy year. That'd be nice. Yeah, and he's on a pretty team-friendly deal. I think it's only like $44 million, So, And I think there's only like a year or two left on it. So, yeah, Portland, there's no rush to move Robert Williams. You can, and teams aren't really going to be opposed to it because it's not really going to impact their their wallets uh, too much. So, yeah, yeah, I think it works well for both sides. But, again, for Boston, it's all about how you manage Tatum and Brown's usage. That's it. Otherwise, you're in the same spot as before. So, uh, to move on from that, we've got the second – big signing slash trade thing. Uh, and that's Devin Vassell uh, yep. drafted by the Spurs that I think pick 24, if I'm not mistaken, or pick 14 or something like that. He was either lottery or late first round. I can't remember. He was lottery. He might have lottery. been. It was 2020. He, he yeah. might have been. We might have been early, actually. I can't remember I, I, the. He, he might be. I'm not kidding with you. That might be a year where he was picked seven or maybe i don't remember it's i just remember he came out of florida i believe because isn't that the same draft that took trey jones and i think he went higher i think he was their top 10 pick um if i'm not mistaken 11 Vassell went 11 okay all right yeah Vassell. he was someone the warriors fans wanted you know good three and d prospect wing um we've talked about it before this is a wings league at this point and guys like Devin Vassell, you know, teams want them. Teams want them and they want them young so that they can mold them into what they want. So um, the Spurs got themselves one. Uh, Vassell had his best season by far last year. Uh, yeah. Really, really getting better. And again, now that they've got Wembenyama, uh, you know, the Spurs don't look half bad. So um, Vassell could look even better. Keldon might look even better. I, I like what they've got going for them. Um, but yeah, Vassell signing a five year, $146 million extension. Um, there are no options though. Uh, and it's guaranteed for 135 million, 11 million in signing bonuses. Um, what are your thoughts on, uh, on the Spurs locking him in? I, I think it's smart. I, I think locking him in early, I'm getting it. The AAV is going to be higher in a few years. Yeah. Why not lock him in at a reasonable price realistically in the next few years? As of right now, it looks a bit it looks a bit hefty. Like yeah. we both said it looks high. But I think in the next few years, with how contracts are going, I think in reality, I think it was smart. It's kind of like a baseball deal to me. It's how I looked at it, how the how the Braves and how other teams have signed their young guys earlier and they've given them solid deals, but they're avoiding arbitration and they're avoiding the real market in a few years. So I think in reality you sign him at a really good rate for what he's going to bring value wise. It's a risk because he could have injury issues down the line. Yeah. He could just not get any better, but I think he will. He's it's a very solid three D player. Like you mentioned, he phenomenal three point shooter. He I think he averaged around 17 last year. I wouldn't be surprised if he's yeah. somewhere hovering around 21 this year. Wouldn't really shock me that much. I, I think he'll, I think he'll be a very, he'll be benefit a lot from playing next to Victor. So I think yeah. someone like I, I understand it. I think the Spurs may might have made a maybe a quick witted move. I, I I don't hate it. I, I understand it. If you want to avoid paying having to battle with the big market teams as a small market team for contracts, I get it. Sign them early, pay them a little bit more. I understand it. Yeah, that's always a tough thing at this point too. It's, it's just you're you're gambling every single time when you're trying. Like you said with Jalen Brown, like that's a huge gamble. A lot of these contracts, like the yeah. Lakers with Austin Reeves, I'm still, I will always go back to that as it's like, they actually just got value. Like they didn't get duped into a big time oh, overpay. Yeah. They paid you know? them a little bit less. Yeah. They paid yeah. Much yeah. And a lot of these teams, I mean, San Antonio, like I do think this is an overpay. I think Devin Vassell yeah. like down the road can hundred percent be worth this contract but right now. Too. As of right now, yeah, so. I agree. yeah, I don't think so either. But I, I do agree that yeah. down the line probably will be worth it. And 
with how contracts have been going recently, like you said, Jalen Brown, I mean, I get it locking him in at a high AV for right now, but in the next few years, it probably won't be in reality. Yeah. And I also like what you said, like he could be up to 20, 21 points this year because yeah. every dude, when Benyama, it's just, people are going to naturally collapse onto him. Yeah. I mean, not only is it like, is he that much of a force going downhill and just being in the mid range, he's a good facilitator, but yeah. he's long and any, I, I don't care what anyone says, whether it's KD or not, when guys are long like that, people just get, they get really reach happy because you just, yeah. you think that you can get the ball from them. So people are really going to be honed in on Vic, which means guys like Vassell, they're going to eat. They're going to get a lot yeah. of open looks, uncontested looks. So I think he's going to have his best season this year. But like you said, it, the, the big question is health. Um, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, or as far as I know, I don't think Devin Vassell's had anything big happen injury wise, and I hope that continues. But oh, last year he he had a leg break or a leg oh. leg, but it was okay. Everyone said it was a little more exaggerated for what for the, for the tanking mm. of it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They were saying that he it wasn't that severe, and it was more so they were mm. sitting him because of what what they were trying to do. Kind of like Lonzo uh, with the ankle with the Lakers. Yeah, yeah I got yeah, you. Kind of sold it a little certain way so they would be able to get someone like mm. that. So I I think he's in reality. I'm pretty sure he's a pretty healthy guy. Yeah, because that's that's the only issue again. And I I mean I guess the Spurs giving him this deal kind of proves that it was, you know, not some big deal. So yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's just, it, again, it's health. That's all, uh, you know, yeah. that's the big thing. Cause uh, if there's regression, that's the natural gamble that you take is yeah. like, this guy excels into the contract when you're going yeah. after them really young. But the big thing is just, you need him to be on the court. And yeah. if he can't stay healthy, then it's like, who cares if he's even regressing he just doesn't play. So um, for the Spurs, this is one of their big time guys of the future. And I'm excited to see him. He had a great year last year. And I think he'll be even better next to Wembenyama. Moving on, we've got the Cameron Payne uh, signing with the Bucks. One year, veteran minimum. Nothing major, but we've talked about campaign kind of bit, uh, kind of quite a bit. Sorry. Uh, obviously had some great years here with the Suns as a backup point guard. Um, yeah. Really really showed how good he is as a scorer off the bench. Um, he's a funky player. Yeah, I think he's like 6'2", 6'3". Um, not a big guy. Solid playmaker. Not the best, but good enough. He's been to the finals. Uh, he's got that playoff experience here uh, with Phoenix. Really uh, really made a name for himself as a scorer and played a lot more last season with all the injuries Phoenix had. Uh, yeah. And then, as we saw... Uh, I think was it he got traded to the Spurs. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, got got yeah. Traded to the Spurs, and like we know, the Spurs they're going in their own oh. direction. So campaign doesn't really fit that. Um, he was out on the market, and Bucks swooped in and got him. So yeah. that's big. You know, like we said, the Bucks lost Javon Carter, who was one of the best backup point guards in the league last season, wow. um, to bring in Cameron Payne as his replacement. Big. Big yeah, time, man. Exactly. Big time. Can't really sneeze at that. So, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts there? I mean, like you said, man, they lost Javon Carter. Huge, huge loss. No doubt about it. But you bring in someone who's that offensively solid at the backup position, like you said, solid playmaker. He's going to give you like at least 10. He's very solid from the three, too. Yeah. Crafty, crafty finisher. He's he's not bad. He has a solid floater, decent mid range game, but no, he's. He's definitely someone that's going to help them a lot. Because I mean, man, they have they still have some crazy good death over there. And I mean, even losing Grayson Allen, it sucks for sure. Yeah. But this is not. I'm not saying it's a replacement, but it's someone that can eat up minutes like for that. And there's just there's a lot of stuff they still have going forward. I the Bucks are still a super super strong team after this trade, which yeah. didn't even really seem to make a dent too much on their assets, which I'm kind of surprised by still. But it's it yeah I. It is what it is. I mean, it's solid for sure. Yeah. I, it's again, yeah, it's just like, it's not something to really sneeze at. Like, it's not a world beater, but it you're, just, you're adding depth, you yeah. know, it's for cheap too. I mean, oh, as we all point. know, if you're, uh, if you're a championship com uh, comp team, guys are just going to say, yeah, I'll take the lowest deal possible and come play, raise my stock, potentially get a ring. You know, can't blame them. He's gonna he's gonna have some fun over there, but yeah, you know, 
However, the Bucks, they're also another situation where, again, the only question in the air here is health. You know, yeah. Dame had a couple injuries, typically a healthy guy, but last couple of years, some, I mean, that abdomen injury is no joke. You know, uh, I'm not saying that I've had the level of, you know, abdomen issue that he had, but I've had a few abdominal strains in my life uh, in the last year. Uh, they're not fun. They're not fun. They literally impact everything you do. Every movement. It hurts. <laughs> it's not fun. So, you know, big time uh, abdomen injuries, uh, they they can linger. So, I, you know, I hope for the Bucks' sake, for Dame's sake, that he's all good. Um, you look good last season, but Chris Middleton as well, injury prone guy. And, Luck. you know, it, you know, the other thing is Brooke. Are we going to see Brooke Lopez be the same guy that he was last season? Because yeah. that was, I think, the biggest thing for Milwaukee was Brook Lopez. <laughs> de- 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 like, if you asked me five years ago, is Brook Lopez ever going to be in a defensive player uh, of the year conversation? I'd have laughed in your face. Yeah. That dude was horrible. <laughs> he was so bad defensively. But, it, you know, it's kind of like Al Horford. It's like these guys are, you know, they're aging like fine wine. So yeah, um, it, it's going to be interesting to see. But, yeah, good for Cameron Payne. He's on a he's on a great team now. So, alrighty, moving on. We've got the tumultuous James Harden situation that just never ends. It starts in Houston. He takes toxicity to Brooklyn, and now he's bringing it to Philly. Which means whichever team is dumb enough to take a uh, take a gander on him, uh, they're gonna deal with it next. I <laughs> guess he is. Yeah. Uh, time and time again, proven if things don't go exactly the way he wants. He's going to have a temper tantrum, not play, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go on strike, and I won't do anything. Um, but some interesting stuff uh, regarding that. There was a little bit of talks. I didn't believe him at first because it makes no sense for him. But Houston apparently was very close to getting James Harden this off season, which is fucking insane. Houston, why? That's just don't. That's stupid. Um, And the only reason it got vetoed, essentially, uh, according to Ime Udoka, uh, mind you, this is from the words of Stephen A. Smith, um, supposedly quoting Ime Udoka. Uh, Ime said he actually talked himself out of a max deal because he went in there talking about how he wanted to return to that scoring champion form. And Ime Udoka and them were like, nah, we ain't trying to have that here. Um, now, you and I have talked a lot about James Harden. He just isn't the same score as before. Yeah. He needs to get the scoring back up, which I still believe to be true. But for Houston, you already have Jalen Green. So bringing yeah. in James Harden to essentially be Jalen Green, it makes no sense. Yeah, It makes no sense. You don't want to move off of Jalen Green. That dude's a potential superstar. Uh, James Harden is on his way out of the league. There's no point, especially for what you'd have to give up, which I imagine would be a lot because Philly is not a team that te- uh, typically asks for small deals. So um, I, it's I guess it's funny to me that, you know, the exact thing we said James Harden should be getting back to. Uh, Ime was like, nope, don't want that here. Um, but it's the fact that he was even close to going back to Houston. That just yeah. blows my mind. That just yeah. like you did all of this to rebuild your team, and then you're gonna fuck it up by bringing him in there and bringing that yeah. toxicity there. He's walked yeah. out on this exact team before. Why? Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, same thing. I think they made the right move. I think Fred Van Vliet's also a way better off the ball player. He's gonna yep help the young guys play a lot better next to him instead of having someone like Harden, who is going to have one of the highest usage rates in the league. And what does he have that Harden doesn't? What's that? A ring. Bros oh. won the chip. James Harden is yeah. a perennial choker, man. I mean, Why I would you want to bring that in? That just doesn't. Oh, God. I, I just I don't see a reason to bring in someone who's so ball dominant next to a bunch of young guys who need the ball in their hands. There's no point. You have a young core that you're building, and it's it's pretty strong young core. You got to keep going with it. There's no reason to bring in someone that could deplete the whole thing and knock it over like that. I, there's no point. I'm not with it at all, and I'm very glad they went the road, the route they did. I think they had a better yeah. offseason than they would have if they would have signed Harden. I like their offseason 100% more. Yeah, 
And you were also talking something I didn't know about. Um, there is apparently a rule, a CBA rule, having to do yeah. with <clears throat> James Harden having to participate in training camp here. Um, because as we know, James Harden has talked about uh, not playing another game for the 76ers, which, again, yeah. he's, I'm going to take my ball home so none of you can play. Um, <laughs> and it's like, okay, but he had to show up for training camp, which was weird at first, given I didn't know this information. So yeah. Harden shows up to training camp and then announces he's never playing another game in Philly and he's never playing another game until he's off of the Sixers. Um, yeah. But apparently what he, uh, if he hadn't showed up to training camp, he wouldn't have been able to become a free agent. So you've got that information. Uh, well, uh, I do. Let everyone um, know. Okay. In the, uh, no, Harden, not attending training camp, even though he's in the last year of his contract, this is illegal per the CBA in Philadelphia, can bar him free of free agency. As per the CBA section 11.3 states, a player who withholds playing services called for by a player contract for more than 30 days after the start of the last season covered by his player contract shall be deemed not to have completed his player contract by rendering the playing services um rendering not the playing services called for there under accordingly such a player shall not be veteran free agent and shall not be entitled to negotiate or sign a player contract with any other professional basketball team unless and until the team for which the player last expressly agrees otherwise in which they would definitely not agree to because they want to get some trade assets out of him so yeah. He had he had to go to training camp for that. I, it's like a weird thing I found out like a few weeks ago. Really odd, but I, I mean it's it's great for Philly. I, I think it's very good for them. Uh, definitely a bargaining chip for Philly. They they need to definitely a hundred percent move off of him. And yeah, yeah, I think this happens in the next few weeks. We've seen the Clippers heat up. They're heating up right now. They're trying to collect assets. They really want him. I. Could yeah, they really just watch. signed what's his name? Uh the dude who was flashing Masseuse's um what was his name? Spurs guy, Josh Primo. Um yeah, You're they right. got him too. They signed him. So I mean Philly, they don't seem to have a problem with bringing in toxic people. So yeah, they don't really uh, seem to care. So bring in another one. Even the hardest yeah. level of toxicity is not that he's not. He's no, he is not a he is not, not a, a criminal not or a weird, sex offender. Yeah, he's, he's not a just weird guy like that. He fucking is, dick. That's it. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. a weird guy, but he's not that. I, I will I will give yeah. part in that. He's not a horrible person like that, but it's still a very such an odd situation that Philly's in right now, man. And I, I hope they can get out of it. Cause I mean, any assets they can get, I, I think they they take it, man. I think they're in a bad he put them in a horrible spot. I will say that. Yeah. I it's just I, I have no respect for guys like that. I really don't. It's just it's I, so lame. It's just it's, it's every offseason, man. It's just, I used to be yeah. Harden one of Harden's biggest fans. Same. Man, he is. He's definitely he, just the way he plays now. It's He's not what he yeah. was. And he, I don't think you can really demand that as the player you are now. Bro, I'll say it again. In 2015, I got a beanie with a, a Rockets beanie with his name embroidered. That dude was like my favorite player to watch. He was so favorite. fun. He was was cool. too. Yeah, he oh was like God. the anti-hero, you know? But yeah. now it's like, oh, my God, this dude, yeah. it, he's just he so childish. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's ridiculous kind of what's going on there. Because, I mean, I the Brooklyn thing, I, I supposedly, quote, unquote, the whole situation there is just like, it's weird, I guess. And I guess Kyrie, Katie, the three of them claim that, which I take it with a grain of salt. They're the three interesting guys there. I will say that. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think uh, I think we're starting to see the last few years of Harden's career, though. I, I don't know how long he sticks around. And yeah. I honestly, I read a report saying he he was interested in maybe playing in China someday. Hmm. Well, I know he's like, big he's over there. Yeah, yeah, he's huge. Yeah, they love him over there. So I mean, yeah, I mean, I get it. I mean, you'd be really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, get back to MVP form. Yeah, very much so. Probably averaging fifty. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And speaking of 50, you know, Harden saying right now, as we know how he is at the moment, play style wise, him wanting to, excuse me, go back to MVP form, quote unquote. I don't know. Uh, well, not only that, but do you remember the last game Kobe played his final game with the Lakers and bro just put up like 50 shots? Shots, <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah. I that's that. what James Harden would look like to me to back in MVP form. It's like, dude just doesn't have the same bounce. He doesn't have the same athleticism. His hamstrings are shot. 
Yeah, he's not the same dude. So like, yes. do you, you know, you've already got Dylan Brooks. Do not get yeah. the bearded Dylan Brooks, you know, who can't defend. It's bad, man. I mean, I am. Yeah. I'm confused by the whole situation, but I mean, I, it is what it is. I, I, I see what's like happening there and I, I'm just glad Houston dodged that bullet, man. They dodged a bullet. Yeah. I mean, if I'm a Rockets fan, I'm honestly scared. It's like, if you're, if your front office is that incompetent to be like, yeah, we'll even consider a dude like that. I don't know. That worries me. Cause it's like, they're, they just like, Teams that do not understand or don't value chemistry or, or don't yeah. value like <laughs> yeah that's personality and ego, it, it, you know. Please, man. Like when James Harden got traded to Brooklyn, everyone they like they automatically became title contenders. And yeah. my first thought was, it's like you just brought the three most just like I, I mean, KD is kind of a bitch in a way, but he's yeah. like. He could be with anyone. I don't care who you put KD next to. He's going to be the same dude. Like, yeah. at the very least, aside from these last couple injuries he's had, he's been one of the most consistent players. He could play with anyone. There's no questions there. Yeah. Kyrie is one of the most inconsistent, least trustable players. I I would not put any faith in him as a player. Not because he's not one of the best point guards in the league, which he is, yeah. but it's like, how, why would I invest in a guy like that? I mean, what was it, 2021, where he just sat out to be at home? Not even, this is not even regarding the vaccine. This is like, he just didn't want to play. He was like, nah, it was my kid's birthday or something like that. So I'm just like, I'm going to take a month off. Like, what oh, the fuck? That was, that might have been 2020. It was, no, so, was it wasn't, was, yeah, it was post vaccine. It was the year, um, was it there they lost to the Bucks in the playoffs? It was like I think six, so, yeah. It was, it was like game. yeah, something like that. He got cleared to play from the whole vaccine thing, but then didn't because he wanted to be at someone's birthday and then like would miss like a month. It, it, like Andrew Wiggins sort of had something like that, but like his dad was in the hospital sick. Sister's birthday, dad in hospital. Not really it's, the same thing. There's a big difference. There's yeah. a big very big difference there. Uh, that was during the peak of the pandemic too, I believe. If yeah, something like that. But they, it was, was post vaccine though. Like he was yeah. clear. I'm pretty sure at that point he was cleared to play. He just chose yeah. not to. And I do remember that. That was weird. Yeah, and it's like we all know Kyrie's as a like he he doesn't think before he does stuff. You know, yeah. like yeah, you know. It, and it's hard when you like, I'm not trying to like, you know, degrade his character or anything. I've yeah. seen all the charity and great stuff for, for yeah, people he does. He does. For I've got sure. no qualms against Kyrie as a, as a person, but as a basketball player, as a basketball the dude's player. just not all there. You know, he's interesting. He's very, yeah, he's a basketball unique. player. I do agree with you. As a person, I, I think he's one of the best people in the league. He's a very kind guy, he's very yeah. generous. He's a very interesting basketball player. Yeah, and he's just he's just not someone I'd want to invest in. You know. No, I'm not uh, with you. I mean, yeah, I don't know and, either. Yeah, and James Harden, like I don't even know who James Harden is as a person. Like credit to him in the day of social media, like that dude has been about as secretive as possible. I know fuck all about James Harden. Very, all very, I know is that the last few years he hangs out with a rapper and he likes yeah. the city of yeah. Houston a lot. But yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I don't know anything about him. Yeah. But all I know is that ever since that final season in Houston, where he just he came to camp looking yeah. Yeah. beefcakey yeah. as hell, he just yeah. has not been the same dude. Yeah. Like James Harden used to be one of the most like, uh, you know, low management kind of guys ever. It's like, yeah, dude, I'm go I'm good. I'm going. I'm going to go out there and hoop. I don't need to yeah. talk. I don't need to do anything. But now, uh, uh, it's all this drama every year. It's always something. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't know what happened. It's really weird that he he used to be a guy that played eighty two yeah. games a year. Very little, very, aside from basketball, very little stuff outside of the headlines. Very yeah. He like you said, he you don't know anything about him. I mean, it's really odd that this has changed this much, significant like this this much. Yeah, and I, I mean, like I I've I don't know if I've talked to you about like I respect Russell Westbrook, but. 
I have never been someone who thinks that Russell Westbrook is like a top point guard in the league. I have so many criticisms of Russell Westbrook as a player. Yeah. And again, similar to Kyrie, zero to do with his character. I have, uh, again, yeah. well, no one's again, ever said a bad thing about Russ as a person. Good things about Russ. Yeah. Great yeah. Team, great. Yeah. Great person. Husband, but... father, yeah. charitable no, man. I know all the stuff he's yeah. done in OKC. The dude's a great guy. But yeah. on the court, yeah, there's, he's there's got questions. There's questions. huge ones. And, yeah. oh. you know, one of as the things. Fan, there, yeah. there's, there's, there, <laughs> there, there's question marks, definitely. I, I, I always respect him for what he did, and I always love him as a player. But yeah, no, yeah. there's 100. percent There's efficiency issues, turnover issues. There's there's a lot of stuff with interesting with him. But yeah, and, and I, you know, one of the biggest things there is when you know when you look at guys like James Harden or you look at guys like Russell Westbrook or Ben Simmons or any of these guys who are on bad teams or are in really awkward situations, yeah. uh, a lot of the time. It just it it becomes them, you know, they kind of like fall into the very trap they want to avoid. Um, Russell Westbrook's biggest issue was he has a specific style of play. He needs yes. the ball. He doesn't yes. play off ball. He's inefficient. He's a turnover machine. He's yeah. a high effort defender, but he's not a very right. good one. Yeah. Um, and his rebounding numbers Stephen Adams would even tell you it's a little bit, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, yeah, just yeah. you know, this smidge. But yeah, when you know when that's the kind of team you're playing for for the bulk of your career, yeah. How you know how, how do we expect you to be to just like Different. flip 180? I mean, yeah. that's why when we've talked about Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin is one of like I am so thoroughly impressed and and respect Blake Griffin as a player oh, yeah. for the fact that he's taken yeah, again like Russell Westbrook his athleticism is currently declining like not yes. I didn't mean currently he is like critically no. declining yeah, a lot yeah. but he's still kind of the same player like yeah. the yeah. same Russell Westbrook who LeBron wanted to bring to the team it was like it's not going to work he needs the ball to be Russell Westbrook LeBron yeah. needs the ball to be LeBron, you know, and it didn't work with the Clippers. Oh, yeah. It's sore. He's had a couple good games. He's played some good minutes, but yeah. still it's like, if there's a healthy Paul George, if there's a healthy Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook, unless he's coming off the bench is kind of different. Yeah. Yeah. He's got and, to play different or something's got to change. Exactly. That's and it's true. because he's been in OKC in that situation where he's had to be the guy who needs the ball. I have to have yeah. the ball. I have to do it because nobody else will. Yeah. You know, and it, it just it corrupts them as players. And it's hard to break out of that because it becomes your ego and your habit. Yeah. You know, we see that with Chris Paul. It's like, you know, when he got asked in summer league, are you coming off the bench? I, I mean, I've never seen a guy get so defensive in my life. Yeah. It was like, yeah, the fuck you think I am, you know, he was salty about it. Yeah. No, I mean, I. Yeah. It, I get it's, it. It's a personality. A it's an ego thing. Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of egos in the league for sure. Yeah, with the guy like Harden, it's like, you know, that Houston situation was toxic. Like it was yeah. not uh it was not a great situation. They they all they put everything on his shoulders. And, yeah. you know, he did kind of 180 himself as a player with Brooklyn and with Philly. And there's respect to be uh respect to be given there. Excuse me. But he's still kind of the same James Harden. Yeah. Um I, I don't think that James Harden's left. It's just, you know. Uh, it's been a bit subdued. So, it, you know, I, I think these environments for players, it, it, it tends to fuck with them and it's hard to break out of the, uh, out of the, out of the hard stuff that they, that they go through. So, no, you know, yeah. uh, to me, Harden's too far gone. I don't, I genuinely yeah. don't think unless you're like, you know, I don't know, the most desperate team on planet earth. There's just I, no I, point. Maybe the Clippers are, man. I mean, they. Oh, they wouldn't shock me. The Clippers, they they're, signed they're anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty desperate. If they, like you said, they signed Josh Primo. They're they're interesting. They're yeah. very interesting. Uh, we will see what goes on with them. I'm not very high on them, but you never know. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what it that does in the next few weeks. I, I think they might get that done for training camp. Or not uh, before um, the season yeah. starts. Uh, I think we could maybe possibly be seeing Harden in a. It, I mean, we we could possibly see him in a Clipper jersey, which will be really odd. But I mean, yeah, it it just depends, you know. I 
again, you know, I, none of us thought the Bucks had any assets to be. Nobody considered the Bucks to be in for Damian Lillard. Apparently, no. they had the assets. Right. Nobody thought the Suns would be able to get involved in that trade. They have the assets, like the exactly. you know, they're making sh- these teams who seem to be out of it seem to make shit happen too. So yeah. it That's wouldn't shock true. me. Um, if I was Philly, I'd honestly let Harden walk. Like I just again, it's like my commitment if I'm Philly is to Joel Embiid. You yeah. know, Joel Embiid is the guy you need to build around him. Um, and uh, instead of being in another situation where you're just stringing out this fucking toxic shit that's gonna be all the talk of the season, only yeah. thing that everybody speaks about, like the Jordan Poole situation with the Warriors. You know how fucking annoying it is after every yeah. single game to hear Monty Poole ask about, do you think the punch had something? You know, it's like, yeah. it's annoying. They don't let it go. And, yeah, no, they, you know, they, no, they definitely don't let that yeah. go. Anything like that. And if Harden just lingers around there, they're not going to let it go. Yeah. yeah. No, more issues will be brought up by that. I'm with you 100%. I, I think, like, I, I, I truthfully think he made a stupidly insane hostile environment there. I, I think yeah. he has to, he has to be gone. Yeah, if I'm Philly, like uh, again, it, it, fuck to trying be. to get a deal done. I'm just like, you want to go, just go. Yeah. I'd take, rather take lose yeah, the contract that. and have the cap space and just you have get you the have toxicity cap. away. Yeah, you have good cap. You will. I, I don't know what the Clippers are going to offer. If they offer Terrence Man, sure, give me Terrence Man. Yeah, I like it, to Terrence Man. I think that's the issue. I think they don't want to give Terrence Man from the Clippers side. We'll see what they offer. I, I don't know what their package will look like, but if I'm Philly, take it. Take it. Yeah, take whatever package or just get rid of them. Like you got let him walk. Move. You gotta, gotta do man. something. You don't want to let him sit. Yeah, you know. He's gonna ruin your team. He's going to yeah. slowly but surely ruin your team. So and all I it's think- gonna do is piss Joel off because it's like, dude, we're yeah. not doing this again. Like it wouldn't shock me if Harden lingers, if Joel Embiid makes a trade request. It wouldn't shock me one bit. And frankly, Joel deserves it. This dude's stuck through all the horse shit. You oh, know. Yeah. They, they've been a dumpster when he first came in. So I yeah, 100% understand what he – no, I I think they, they will – they're definitely going to respect whatever Embiid wants. And, I mean, it, they should. Yeah. It's his team, and they're going to they're gonna do whatever he wants. That's 100% for sure. Yeah. Um, we've kind of – we've gone on a bit here about the hard situation, and it is very – like I said, it's tumultuous. There's a lot of stuff going on. It can mean a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things go down with it, but um, yeah. we are going to move on from there. Um, we do have here the beginning of the preseason. Uh, excuse me again, mineral water. You know it gets uh, it gets the things going. Uh, the preseason has begun. Basketball is back. back. Yeah, it's back officially tomorrow or today. The games are starting to kind of roll out tomorrow as well. Um, yeah. I was talking to Dom earlier. Uh, we're going to be doing. Warriors and Thunder games on this channel, or you know, uh, remember he is a Thunder fan, uh, and I'm a Warriors fan, so uh, I do have League Pass. I'll be watching Thunder games too. So if you're a Thunder fan, I don't know, you know, hopefully I don't piss you off. <laughs> uh, I I am critical, believe me, I'm very I, critical I, of the Warriors. So I I understand it. There's times with the Thunder, I'm the same way. There's a lot of times, yeah. I used to watch the Thunder games. The uh, first year, Chris Paul got traded. I watched yeah. every. I watched the first half of the season, and I didn't watch another game for the rest of the year. Really? Um, wow. I, I watched the first half. I watched almost every game, and I was like, you know what? This team is just bad. I, it is what yeah. it is. It's, yeah, and it was just irritating to watch. But it is because there's a lot of winnable games with teams like that. But I mean, it is what it is. But this year, I'm I'm excited. They have a team. They have a legit yeah. team. They, they can make the they can make some noise. So I'm I'm very excited. Yeah, and that's the fun thing about young teams is it's like very. it's not even it's not even the losing. It's that you want to be able to see the future. That's the thing. And like I'm an A's fan. Y'all see the shit back there. Okay. Yeah. You don't understand how many times I want to bash my head in with the fucking pan. I hate this team. Yeah. I hate it so much. Yeah. But I love it. It's an abusive relationship. I watch a lot of these games because I like to see the future. It's not because the team gets their ass handed to them and Ken Waldachuk <laughs> can only go four and two thirds innings because he can't pitch to save his life, even though he had a solid yeah. end of the season. I'll give it to him. But yeah. I like watching the future. And that's the that's like if you're a Thunder fan, the last yeah. two, three years have been incredible for you. Not yeah. because you're not winning or you're, you know, oh, yeah. 41 games. Cool. It's like 
dude, we've got some guys. We Shea got some guy. is a dude. He's like he's gonna. He's already a top ten player, potentially yeah. top five, depending on how greedy you want to get. And I wouldn't really be mad if he said top five. Um, he's killing it, you know. Yeah. And the young guys they've got. I'm again, Chet. Like, I'm excited, man. Chet's supposed to be a demigod, man. So if he I'm could excited. be like that, yeah, yeah you guys I'm are golden. Very. I'm, I'm gonna enjoy watching them. Yeah, as a team without a, a center last year, this will be very fun to see someone that's actually above the height of six foot eight. Yeah, because Jalen Williams is good, but still, you know, yeah, it's more of a power forward, I would say. But even then, I'm yeah. very excited. There's a lot of good depth. I'm interested to see the bench battles. A lot of young yeah. players with benches, so I'm, I'm interested to see who gets the minutes and who doesn't. I think there's a lot of good, a lot of good positives coming up. So I'm interested in that. But no, like you said, man, these. Yesterday they had some they had like pretty good games. The T Wolves game was cool up in Abu Dhabi. That was cool. Yeah, and to get into those, you know, we were talking about Dallas, and and you were very high on the Kyrie signing uh, about them re-signing Kyrie. Yeah, yeah I was. And, I <laughs> you know I like hey, man, they yeah. <laughs> need the secondary scoring. I agree, yeah. but I've yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. very much on the side of look, man. They don't have defense anywhere. It's like they've got yeah, Grant they, Williams. They got issues still, man. There's a lot and, of holes. Exactly. And like, holes. Minnesota is not a bad team by any they're means. Not. They're not. They're a good playoff, a good low playoff team, I think. Yeah. Because the issue is, is they have two conflicting centers. Um, <laughs> and yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little and, bit. Too, yeah, yeah, a little too much. They don't mesh well. Uh, yeah. And – it, it, the biggest thing is, is that they get clogged up and the, 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 you know, it gets very, the spacing is just really, really bad. Yeah. Uh, and for Dallas to kind of get played out of the gym, the, at least yeah. game one, I mean, they were yeah. down 20, like three or four times in that game. Uh, and you know, again, like we've talked about Anthony Edwards being a potential superstar, 100% agree. Yeah. Like, it's not like Minnesota is, you know, they're not, you know, 2022 Houston Rockets, but they're, you know, they are not this offensive juggernaut. And no. for Dallas to kind of get smoked out by them, yeah, it just proves it proves the point, you know. Um, especially Carl Anthony Towns, 20 points here, eight of 16 yeah. shooting, only two of seven from three as well, which makes yeah. it even worse. Not Cat wasn't game. even playing a good game and he still yeah. dropped 20. Uh, so, in preseason on 17 minutes, you yeah. know, yeah, Rudy Gobert, nine points, eight boards, you know, not, yeah, not. and he had three blocks. It's like, uh, I don't know, yeah. man. Uh, Leonard Miller also played a little bit. I know that was yeah. uh, someone you were very high on, four points, very. three boards, uh, yeah, not bad in a block, but they just the, the the Mavericks they just lack the defense, and I, uh, you know. I don't really know. I don't know what to do with them because I. Uh, it's hard to put any faith in that if you don't have defense. Yeah, you're not you know? gonna win it, man. It is what it is. I mean, I. Yeah, and they're not all, and they're not as offensively gifted as Denver. You know, they not not whatsoever. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, not not even close. I mean, yeah, it's it's bad, man. I mean, Tim Hardaway Jr. He's he hasn't been really special in the last few years. I mean, you got Josh Green. You're banking on him a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I know they're banking on his development a lot before. Like, I, I don't know. I know him. Hardy. I mean, Hardy possibly, possibly, maybe could give you maybe 14, 15 this year. I don't, I think that's kind of a stretch, but yeah. They just they need help. They need a lot of help on that. I think offensively, this team is just it's not what it was. And I mean, it's really weird to think about it like this. But I mean, they signed guys like Exum, and then they drafted Prosper. I, I mean, yeah, Olivia. I, I, they they drafted a lot of defensive players, but I mean, it's yeah, it, it, it's it's two players right there that have no offense. They just offer solely defense, and it's going to be kind of hard to have that to mesh with Luca, who's kind of needing someone who's going to be able to spot up or do something else besides cut. And I, I, I there's, I think I looked at this team a little different now I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know what? They, they improved the defense. I think a bit from last year, I, I no doubt in my mind that, yeah, I, I agree. They're definitely not what they were last year, but yeah. they still have 
black holes offensively too now. And I, I think you you were I think they were pretty sure they were a pretty good offense last year, if I'm correct. I, I think they were up there offensively. Yeah, I think before Kyrie got there, they I think were before Kyrie got there, they were, yeah. they were pretty good offensively. And the year before they were like a top five offense, but yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it, man, and it's like lively. He's not going to be able to score anywhere outside of two feet. I mean, I'm just being real. He's a rim runner. I mean, I think that's yeah. is going to help Luca. But he, like we said, he's 19 years old, man. I mean, how much only, can you get from him? Yeah, he's such a raw talent. He is mm-hmm. purely an athletic, high defensive IQ big. I will give him yeah. that. But aside from that, what else does he offer? And I, I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal rim protector. But offensively, he's not. He's nothing special. Olivier Max Prosper, nothing special on offense. Very solid defensive prospect. Dante Exum, he was known for his defense. Nowadays, I, I he's a weird player. He hasn't become he hasn't been in the league for three or four years now. And I mean, yeah, offensive, we know he's a black hole. He cannot score. Yeah. I'm, he's he's rough. He's a good playmaker, but it's like if you can't put up at least 10 a game, and you know, who cares if you're a good playmaker? Yeah. yeah. I, and Dwight Powell, I mean, I'm glad he's not starting anymore, which thankfully yeah. he was. He's 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 his own thing. I'm not even gonna comment on him, but I mean, they just they got a bunch of cutters. I mean, Derek Jones Jr. solid player. He's a cutter though. I mean, he doesn't offer anything outside of cutting and maybe solid defense. It, it's just it's a team where they might have a lot of conflicting talents. I guess I would say. Like, yeah, that's what we talked of- about before. Like the Mavericks, they just sign specialty guys. Yeah, guys yeah. who offer one thing. One thing. And yeah. the issue is, is it's like. One of the things that uh, I don't remember if it was Steve Kerr who said this or if it was someone else, but I'm pretty sure it was Kerr. And everyone was talking about like how Steve Kerr is able to get a lot of these guys to overperform. Like we've seen JaVale yeah. McGee overperform. We've seen all these, uh, a lot of guys really do better than people think they should. And one of the things Steve Kerr talks about with the offense, the Warriors run the motion offense, more touches than anyone in the league, more, you know, plays. And it, it's because Steve Kerr was like, when guys touch the ball, when they feel like they're a part of the offense, they play yeah. better yeah. because they, but that's not how Dallas plays. Yeah. We know how Dallas plays. Okay. If you're jo- like, you're talking about Josh green, having him having a better year, Josh green for the, I would, I'm going to bet. I would bet money. Like 90% of this season for Josh green is just going to be him in the corner. Yeah. Him in the other corner. Yeah. Him on the wing, him on the other wing. That's it. Yeah, and when he he's gonna get the ball, and he's either gonna have to shoot it or pump fake drive. You know, there's like, how can you expect Josh Green to be this elite player when he gets yeah. relegated to tasks? Yeah, a lot of these guys, that's what they're gonna be asked to do. Like Grant yeah. Williams, uh, you know, well, better you know better make camp in the corner, but <laughs> like yeah. it's gonna be boring for you. Yeah, they, you know, yeah, they have a lot of guys, man. They they play so much isolation over there and. And pick and roll, roll. it's just, it's a lot of pick and roll ball and it just gets predictable, man. And I mean, it's yeah. And you can't blame guys sitting in the corner to come in and and then make shit happen after not touching the ball for 40 minutes, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's, it's just not fair. Like, (laughs) yeah. no. And the worst part is, is that, you know, that's going to happen. And then everyone's going to start flaming the guys who aren't making shit happen in the corner. It's like, dude. They're yeah, ice cold. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't seen the ball. Like, so I, I don't know. I just don't have faith in the Mavericks. I don't like pick and roll by like pure pick and roll. Unless your name is Chris Paul. I don't yeah. care about your pick and roll. I yeah. just don't. I'm with you on that one, man. I mean, it, I think, I think Luca's just a hardened 2.0. He's just, it's hard to play with that, man. It's so difficult because it's so one dimensional. Yeah, he's he fun. is he's a great talent. I'm not saying that. It's just, I think, like you said, he's one dimensional. I, I just, I look at him and I'm like, oh, this guy's just hardened. He really reminds me of Harden every time I watch him play. Probably better feel for the playmaking game, I would say, off off rip when he came in. He's probably a better playmaker than Harden was coming in. But, I mean, scoring-wise, he's a similar score to Harden. He's a weaker three-point shooter, sure. But, I mean. Or better off I, dribble, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a one-dimensional talent. And I think that's. Someone like him, I think he needs to expand his game. And I mean, it's yeah, he needs to become an off-ball threat. Otherwise, yeah. it's never going to work. That's the it, big thing. I just, I don't know if I don't think he's going to be there to stick around for this. I, 
I think he's going to want out. And I, at the same time, I don't know if I could even say it's all necessarily his fault. They've brought in some questionable talent next to him. I'd say at yeah. times, I mean, like you said, it's one dimensional play. You should know how your players play and you should bring in the right talent for him or around him. And I think they it's just, of, yeah, they, it's just yeah. difficult. It's like, you could yeah. not like, you know, I have to get two elite shooters in the corner. I have to get someone on the wing that's going to be willing to sit there and let Luca do his thing, but also be able to create on their own. And then I have to get someone who's an incredible perimeter defender and can shoot the three at at least 35%. It's like, those are very specific things and they're hard to get, you know, they're hard to get from not role players. And that's why you see this team really settle for role players because it's hard. Like we've talked about Chris Middleton. That's a good fit. He's very. a wing player. He's very good in the catch and shoot. Yeah. But if he needs to create, he can. He can. Yeah. You know, and he's not a great defender, but he's serviceable. He's smart. Um, but, you know, they went after Kyrie, which doesn't make sense. Kyrie needs the ball. He can, ball. He can be off ball. Can. Yeah. But yeah. it's yeah. again, it's like. You know, when Russell Westbrook was in LA, it's like LeBron sitting in the corner. Is LeBron bad in the corner? Not particularly, but yeah. is you LeBron? Are you maximizing LeBron in the corner? <laughs> yeah, exactly. LeBron, right? I mean, yeah, there's there's lots of question marks for this team, man. And I, I looking at yeah. it right now, I I think I might have overshot them a little bit. I don't know how I feel about them, but I will say, Tim T Wolves, man, they they're they're interesting if they figure out that cat situation. I mean, I yeah. personally. You can't trade Gobert. He's untradeable now. But Cat yeah, might be contrary to ship off if. Yeah, I, frankly, I'd do it. Yeah, I I'd do. I, you got to move off it. of one, in my opinion. I'd do it because it's I just going to be the same thing. Yeah. I, and if in reality, I, I think it has to be Cat because you, you can't trade Gobert. No one wants that contract. No one yeah. wants. You have to probably ship assets with it, which you don't have. The Jazz own all your assets. So I mean, you got to try gonna to have to move best. like Leonard Miller, maybe Jalen Noel with yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm them, I don't really want to do that. So if I'm, I'm trying to ship cat off if I can, any way I can. Which, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Of, I think that might be buyers on cat, but he's a weird talent. Also, he might need a certain skill set around him. But yeah, exactly. I mean, he is a modern big, but yeah, he, it's he's gonna net a lot of, or he's gonna the, the wolves are gonna ask for a lot for him. So yeah, probably more than people are willing to send. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now that we've gone over a lot of kind of the situation between Dallas uh, and Minnesota here, uh, mostly Dallas because they're pretty much a hot button topic at the moment uh, as far as like, are they, you know, uh, real or fake for for contending? Um, And I remember last season when everyone said that Kyrie going there and make him a contender. I didn't I didn't forget. All right. I remember. I did say that. A lot of people did say that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know how that ended. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I missed the plan, man. Still embarrassing. Anyways. All right. Game one. These were the Abu Dhabi preseason games. Uh, We've got Dallas winning game one or Minnesota winning game one here handedly. 111 to 99. Uh, You got the box score, man. Let's let's get into it. We'll get uh, get right into the box score here. Uh, Let's get into it. Yeah, so we got Dallas over here, man. We got Grant Williams, 6-2, one block, one assist, and two rebounds. Um, Yeah, I mean, uh, Prosper, their rookie, one point, one turnover, one rebound, and that's pretty much it for him. Mr. Lively, you have two points. You have one block, five rebounds. Um, Luca, 25 points, one turnover, one assist, five rebounds. Kyrie, two points, one block. One rebound, two assists. Dwight Powell, five points, one block, and you have two steals from Dwight Powell, which is odd. You have Josh Green, six points, one turnover, three assists, and three rebounds from him. You have Seth Curry, two – wow, that's a pretty empty box score. Two rebounds for him. And you have Maxi Kleba, two points, one rebound, and you move on to Hardy, who had 13 – 13, two turnovers, one steal, three assists, and one rebound. Exum, five, one, one, three, and three rebounds to add. That's solid. You have, um, this would be Markeith Morris, who has three points, one one steal, and 
two assists, one rebound. I, I'm confused how they – that's a really weird box score. And then they have uh, – Oh, wow. I've totally forgot about this. Yeah, they have A.J. Lawson. They have him having nine, one, and two, it looks like. And you have Greg – is that Greg Brown the third, too? Yeah. It is. Wow, this is crazy. You have um him putting up five, two, and four. Is that – this is oh, – I forgot about this because there are going to be a lot of different players playing right now for them. Yeah. Yeah. Pre- that makes sense. Dexter Dennis, and you have him having seven, two, and three. You have Jordan Walker having eight, two, and one, and three. And that's the, if I'm not wrong, that's the guy that was hating on Luca pretty bad, I think, from, um, was it from Miami? I think he went to Miami and they're teammates now or something. Oh, really? He's like a 24 year old rookie and he was like hating on Luca. He just doesn't like him, I guess. It was like really funny before he got <laughs> drafted by the Mavericks. And then moving on to the T Wolves, you have McDaniels having nine, nine, one, uh, one turnover, one block, and one assist to, with five rebounds. You have Cat, 22, two blocks, and one assist, and four rebounds. You have Gobert, nine, nine, three blocks, and eight rebounds. Nikhil Alexander Walker, 11, two, and five. Mike Conley, five, three, and four with two turnovers. Kyle Anderson, two, two points, one block, one steal, and five uh, one assist, five assists, and one rebound. Shake Milton, interesting signing. I forgot about him there. Yeah. 12 points. You have two turnovers, one steal, one assist, and four rebounds. Nas Reed, 16. 16, one, and seven. Not bad. Troy Brown, six, one, and seven. Another signing they had. McLaughlin, two, one, and three. Luca Garza, 12 points, one block, and six rebounds. Mano, zero, zero, and three assists and three rebounds. Leonard Miller, four, one block, and three rebounds. And you have, is that Matt Ryan? Yeah, from the Lakers, yeah. Yeah, I remember him. Good shooter. Um, It looked like he only had one rebound. Yeah. Rebound in the foul, baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a... Interesting box score. It's, like we said, it's preseason. You can't take too much into account with it, but it's still something, man. It's still um still basketball at the end of the day. So interesting. I mean, it's it's cool that it's back. That's really exciting. Yeah. I mean, just to like briefly further go about what we were talking about with Dallas, it's like you got Josh Green here again, only six points, three of six, yeah. 0 for two from three. Like six field goal attempts is probably like five to seven is probably the range of attempts he's going to get per game. Yeah. You know, with Kyrie and Luca starting and playing like the 35, 40 minutes they're going to be playing, Josh Green just is not going to be getting that many opportunities. And oh. again, to expect him to like be some elite shot creator yeah. is just an unfair <laughs> ask. Yeah, yeah you're, it's not going to happen, and that's that's too bad because I, I think he's a very solid talent. But hey, yeah, it makes. Sense. Like I was saying, I was watching this game one, and I mean, if we just look at all these shooting percentages, I mean, Grant Williams two of seven from the field, yeah, Prosper zero of three, Luca eight of fourteen, which isn't bad. Uh, no, but three of eight from three, Kyrie one of six from the field, Josh Green was three of six, but zero of two from three, Seth zero of two from the field. Maxi Kleba, 0 for 1 from 3, 1 of 3 from the field. Jaden Hardy, 4 of 10. AJ Lawson, 3 of 10. Jordan Walker, who's not really going to play if he's yeah. on the team come the regular season. He was 3 of 8. That was because Minnesota defends well. And yeah. if a team defends well on the perimeter and you just have a ton of shooters, where's the offense? Exactly. It's all going to fall on Luka and Kyrie. Yeah. Because those guys don't create, you know? You need guys who can like either come off the bench or who can be tertiary scores. Like, you know, the Warriors have Andrew Wiggins. Is Andrew yeah. Wiggins some like, you know, give me my 25 shots a game? No. That's not. Yeah. But if the Warriors are in a pinch and need a bucket, he can get it off the dribble. You know, yeah. he's a, he can create his own shot. So um right now I'm looking at this roster, and aside from Seth Curry, I cannot name one guy on this entire roster. That aside from Luca and Kyrie can consistently go get their own shot. Fair not enough. a single one. Not Fair Grant. Enough. Not Josh Green yet. Jaden yeah. Hardy. Not really. Not yet. Not yet. Least. Yeah. 
Yeah. Markeith Morris, no, he's not his brother. His brother is the far superior offensive player. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tim Hardaway Jr., Mr. Inconsistent. Yeah. No, he didn't even play today. Derek Jones Jr., not a scorer. Like, yeah. They just don't have any sort of punch outside of Luka and Kyrie, and that's a problem on top of their already big issues defensively. So, um, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they're in for a rude awakening, I feel like. But we will we will see. Maybe they surprised me a few years before. I Maybe they make it work again. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Well, I mean, yeah, 2022, the entire yeah. second half, they had the number one defense in the league. They did. The number one. I mean, yeah. like, who would have guessed? But – it, it like once they started moving guys around, it immediately it just went away. Yeah, it just completely went away, oh, and their yeah. offensive issues, like once again, showed themselves. So, and frankly, I think they've gotten worse in this off season. I mean, you added a couple again, some specialty guys. Yeah, specialty is not think, efficiency. So you added you, but I don't, do you have the time? That for too. You? Do you have the time for you to develop? I I don't think you do. So I. I'm not a fan as of yeah. They, they they're questionable, man. There's a lot of question marks I have with them. We will see. I am not very. I I don't know. I I think they built it wrong. I, I think for Luca, and I think they're gonna have. I think they're gonna find that out in a few years when he's gone. I, I think he's gonna walk. I think if well, anything, well, if Luca leaves or if they trade Luca or something like that happens. I think if anything, yeah. Dallas will in, will get better very quickly because it's just easier yeah. to build around non Luca type players. It really yeah. just is. One hundred percent. I pick and roll guys. You have to build a certain way around them. You can't. Yeah, and there's a there's a ceiling to that. There yeah. isn't in, in today's league. It there's a ceiling. You know, it, no. you, you can't. <laughs> you're just not going to get championship production from yeah. Reggie Bullock. You know, yeah. it's just not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, the team is questionable on death, and it's questionable with the – aside out of those two, Luke and Kyrie, yeah, like you said, I don't – even then, I, I think Seth Curry is a very fringe shot creator at that. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. with you. I, it's a lot of a lot of issues when it comes to playing a real playoff zone and someone who can't create a shot in the playoffs outside of two guys. There could be a bit of an issue, and I mean, yeah, we're going to see it. I think once again, I think they if they even make the playoffs, that's the thing. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we're looking at Minnesota here, and Jaden McDaniels has taken leap after leap each year. I think yeah. he's a very good three and D player. I know uh, in oh. this game he did go two of eight from the field, one of three from three, but he's a good player and yeah. good in transition, good in the corner. Uh, Cad can obviously get his own, whether it's from three or driving to the rim. Um, yeah. Rudy is kind of useless unless he's in the dunker spot. Nikhil, yeah. very underrated, good very. shot creator, uh, and he's a very All downhill guy, big fella. Yeah. yeah. Mike Conley, we know how he is. Get to his floater, yeah. good three-point shooter. You know, like Shake Milton. Yeah, they've got a lot of stuff they got, here. They got stuff going for him. You know, outside yeah. of that trade, trade's bad, but outside of it, they, they got stuff going for him. It's not, it's not over yet. No, it's just they they just they have one issue and it's they they spent they they took their home run swing on Rudy Gobert they which was it. stupid. Yeah. Is their one issue. Other than that, yeah. I think they're a damn good team. If you could find yeah. a way to get off of one of your bigs, they're going to be they're going to be golden, I think. They're good. Um, I agree. I 100% agree. You get any any other assets with that. Yeah. Bad team. Whether it's like you're getting good role players or another star back, or if you're just getting draft picks, because either way you're going to be able to land yourself some solid players in, in return. So, yeah, Minnesota, they they're look solid. It's just the same yeah. issue. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, it could be worse. I'll say that it could be worse. Yeah, and we will get into game two now. Uh, again, Minnesota wins. They sweep the series against the Mavericks yeah. in Abu Dhabi. This okay. one, a 104 to 96 victory. Uh, we could get into the box score there too. Yeah, 100%. So then again, we have Nikhil Alexander Walker with six, one block, one steal, and two rebounds. Cat, 14, one block, two steals, two assists, three rebounds. Gobert, seven, one block, and five rebounds. Edwards, 13, one turnover, one block, three assists, two rebounds. Conley, four, one, and two. 
Kyle Anderson, two points, one block, two assists. And you have Nas Reed, 14, 14, one, one, and uh, three. I mean, solid production from that guy again. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Jake Milton, four, one, three, and one. Troy Brown Jr., two, one, and three. McLaughlin, three, four, one, three, one, four, and two. And Wendell Moore Jr., I believe. Is that, is that who it is? Let me check. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, perfect. I didn't want to say the wrong name. I feel bad. You have him with – Six, one, and one, and one, and two. And you have Garza, seven, one, and five. Mano again, four, one, and four. You have Matt Ryan with the oh, six, Jesus. Other, yeah, two assists and two rebounds. I mean, like we said, he's a, he's a sharp shooter. And then Leonard Miller having a better game, 10, 10, but he had a lot of turnovers, four turnovers, um, Two two steals, one block, and one assist, one rebound. Yeah. And I mean they they have an interesting team. And then who is this? Uh Tyrese Martin. Okay. Yeah. Four, one, and four. You have I don't want to butcher his name. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is it Aisha Nix? Yeah. No, 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 no. Or Vit Kretschke. Vit Kretschke? Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't know. I think. Maybe four, one, and two, and then you had Deshaun Nix, uh, one, one, and three. Yeah, I mean, I'm significantly, yeah, they. I am. I'm looking at this box score for Dallas, man. I mean, crap, they're not good again. So you have Josh Green with six, one, and three. Grant Williams six, three, and four. Lively two, three blocks, one steals, four rebounds. Hardy. 22 points, six turnovers. So, man, that's a lot. Two assists, eight rebounds. Luca, 18, four, four turnovers, six assists, five rebounds. And Hardaway Jr. with eight, one, and one. You have Rashawn Holmes, zero, with three rebounds. And that's, yeah. Kleba, two, four. You have Prosper, five, one, and six. Eg- Exum, five. Five, five, and two. Powell, two, two, and two. Derek Jones Jr., three, one, and one. And um, Dennis, five, one, and one. Walker, six, two, and one. Lawson, two, three, and two. Or two, two, and three, sorry. Greg Brown, four, and three. And then, yeah, that's pretty bad. I mean, I'm looking at the shooting. They shot 37% as a unit from the field to compare to the mm-hmm. – the Wolves, 43%. I mean, yeah, it's not yeah. very good. Uh, 37% from the field, 30% from three, where Minnesota shot 45% from three. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, again, like, we'll just look at Jaden Hardy. You know, this is preseason, so you're not seeing the highest level of play from both teams, especially defensively. Guys are just yeah. kind of getting to shape. But Jaden Hardy, six turnovers, nine of 21 from the field, four of 10 yeah. from three. Like, again, Tim Hardaway Jr., Mr. Inconsistent, three free from the field, two of six from three. Grant Williams, supposedly your elite three and D defender, two of seven from three, only six points, those being those two threes. Like, it, Josh Green, two of six from the field. Yeah. Only shots he made were those two threes, and he played 22 minutes, dude. I This is like... If you're a Mavericks fan, dude, I feel horrible for you. This is going to suck for – it's going to be a bad season for them. I'm I'm betting they miss the playoffs again. Wow. I'm betting I, they miss the playoffs again. This shit's man. ass, bro. This is ass, dude. <laughs> like, who – that? seriously, I, I dead serious. Aside from Luka and Kyrie, name another player that can make shit happen on a consistent – I mean, Seth Curry may be the only one. Maybe. Who else can? Hardaway is so in, he's like Malik Beasley. It's like one night he's incredible, the next night he's horrible. One night incredible, yeah. the next night horrible. You are you are in a I think Jane Hardy might be your third best shot creator, and he looks pretty it's horrible. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm, a team that I don't know, man. I, mean, I, I think they're I think they're gonna struggle a bit more than I initially thought looking at it right now. I'm like it's embarrassing, dude. Like, this is like first go of Cleveland for LeBron type of embarrassing. It's like, this is who you're surrounding this motherfucker with? Yeah. It's like, Ilias Brasdikas cannot be his number two. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, or not Brozdikas, whatever his name was. I forget uh, the center. Uh, was it Brozdikas? Yeah, I don't remember. You're right. Uh, uh, Ilgauskas? Ilgauskas, that's who. Sorry. Il, um, is that yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Adrianus Ilgauskas. Like, that can't be your second best player with LeBron James. You yeah, just, it is, can't be. This is similar I, to that. I mean, yeah, I, don't, I think Kyrie was a. I don't know. He's not. He's not your savior. I'll say that he's not your savior. They should have made. I'm telling you, dude. Two years ago, they should have made the move for Zach Levine. They should have made the move for Zach Levine. He would be a nice um, off the ball option, definitely. Exactly. But and what can he? Do? Play yeah. On, play on exactly. That, I I'm with you. I I think there's that, and like you said, Chris Middleton. I remember he was rumored there for a few years. Never happened. But hey, I. Live and learn for them, man. They're gonna they're gonna find out once again. I mean, it is what it is. They they messed up, I think, and I I think they're gonna regret it. And Luca's gonna definitely request that trade or that trade request. But like you said, it could benefit them, help speed up a rebuild if they need it. I I don't know. They're in a weird spot. Yeah, it's they're, like, dude, how can you look at this roster and yeah. be like, dude, yeah. these guys are winning it all? It's oh, like, yeah. bro, this is horrible. I, I maybe – they're going to be a very, very – I think six seed is the best, 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 best case That's – oh, yeah. That is like that is they're easy. clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, that is – yeah, we are making a late season run. We are the six seed now because the uh, this right now, I would not be surprised if this year they, they're they are a playing team to me as of right now. I could see if a that, yeah. Team. Yeah, they're a very fringe playing team and – we're gonna see because they yeah, like you said, they're they got they got a lot of question marks. Because so again, will... you got Portland who's now competitive, San Antonio who's now competitive. Yeah. OKC is not even just a play on a uh, play-in team, but a genuine playoff threat. Yeah, Possible. yeah. Minnesota, probably more of a playoff threat than play yeah. like they were before. Houston, yeah. playoff team. Like yeah. I cannot name another team in the West that's genuinely bad other than Dallas. I can't. Every like San Antonio yeah. might be the closest to it, but yeah. I think Wembenyama is like gonna make them at the very least a play-in team. Because other than that, I don't see another bad team. Portland looks good. They look like they actually look comp. And we know that the Utah Jazz proved last season. Like these Making teams, yeah, yeah, shake it up. It's like you're just giving us assets. So Portland, like Utah, they're gonna be all right. Like they might be one of the worst teams and they're not going to even be that bad. So I, I just, this Dallas team, man, like I'm being harsh, but it fucking sucks. Like this shit is like, it's cringe to look at. Yeah. This is who they're surrounding Luca with, but you know, again, I don't know. It's like, as much as I feel for Luca, it's like, you're kind of, you kind of dug your own grave, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's realistically someone on him. The way his play style is hard to match. I mean, it's it's the same with Trey Young. It's like, what did what does Atlanta do to oh, fix the Trey Young situation? They Harris. bring in Dejounte Murray. It's like, yeah, another on ball. It, it yeah. doesn't make. It blows my mind that. I think that one is personally worse than Kyrie. I I think Kyrie has probably the off the ball significantly yeah. better than Dejounte Murray. And I, I, the Hawks are a whole different story that we we won't even get into because they are. They are a dumpster fire as of right now, man. I'm not fond of them. I yeah, and people I know a Hawks fan, and dude, he genuinely believes that like DeJounte is great on that team. And I know they're like the DeJounte's a damn good player. He's like a top yeah. 15 guard in the league, easily, probably top 10, lower 10 around yeah. there. But like he shot, I think, 38 or 39 percent in catch and shoot threes this yeah. season, which is really good. But that's like yeah. a one-off season. That's like the first time DeJounte had an efficient three-point shooting in any capacity. So, yeah, it's like, again, you have LeBron in the corner. You're not yeah. maximizing LeBron. It's yeah. So, that, I, I don't – these teams just are not – they're like – I don't get it. I don't – who – it just makes me think like being a GM in the NBA is easy. It really does. It's like, what are these moves you guys are making? Who? There's they're, no way you think this is gonna work. <laughs> like, they're questionable for sure. I will say that. I'm being an asshole at this point, but I don't really care. Maverick, <laughs> fuck the Mavericks. This is that's horrible. That's just that's so criminal to look at, dude. 
Oh my god, Seth Curry is your best player. That's so cringe. Holy shit. <laughs> for the season, I think we'll find out pretty early in the season their issues. But hey, that this next game though. Yeah. This game was fun. Yeah. Now I we've got I did get to see a bit of this one. This one was the Warriors Lakers one. Yes. Yeah. Warriors, man, we'll get into this one. I'm excited, bro. I this I'm hyped for this. Warriors beat the Lakers 125 yep. to 108 at home. This was Chris Paul's debut. Uh, I enjoyed the game. Um, before we even get into the box score, I just want to go over something. And if you're a Warriors fan watching this, believe me, you know just as much as I do. If we take a look at this plus minus here, of all the Warriors players, whether it's Kendrick Davis and Javen Johnson and Donovan Williams, Jerome Robinson, guys that are probably going to be in the G League or not on a team in any capacity – not a single warrior, regardless of status, were in the negative and plus minus. Everyone was in the positive, not even a zero. Everyone was either two or above in plus minus in a game against the Lakers, who are supposedly the deepest team in the West, or w- at least one of the couple. Um, yeah. I know LeBron didn't play. Regardless, he would have only played like 10 minutes anyway, so it's not like this was some, you know, oh, let's pump the brakes here. Um, I was telling Dominic before we started recording, the reason I'm so I, I was so psyched about this game is that the Warriors have they had such a big issue last season, uh, starting the year off on a good note, uh, on, yeah. on a high note, and coming out with an intensity. Um, they came out very lackadaisical. Obviously, they had the Jordan Poole issue, so the chemistry was kind of shot from the beginning. But yeah. they just did not come out with the intensity, especially on the road. And mind you, this was at home. The next game, again, is against the Lakers, but this time in L.A., so we'll see how that goes. But right now, they they came out strong. I liked what I saw. Everybody on the roster played hard, played aggressive, and and played smart. And, you know, this is the way to start things off. You win a game against the team that knocked you out of the playoffs and kind of exposed you. And, and, you know, I think this is a great way to start things off. So I'm, I'm excited, I think, you know, Going forward, this team is going to look a little bit better than I expected personally. Um, the depth showed out, and that was the biggest thing, you know. So uh, we can get right into the box score here. What did you, you know, what do you got for us? Yeah, so we got the Lakers. I'll start off with them first. Uh, six, and this is a much prettier box score, I will say this, than the one we just announced before this. Yeah. Significantly prettier than the games before. You got Vanderbilt with six points, uh, one assist, seven rebounds. Hachimura, 12, one, and seven. AD, 15, and five. I, I think he only played 15 minutes, right? Yeah, like 12, very, 45. Yeah, not much. Very low minutes for him. Um, Vincent, seven, four, and one. Another big asset. Lakers added yeah. another solid point guard. D'Lo, 15, and five. Christie, 15, 1, and 2. And another young guy they got over there. It's interesting. Great summer league, too. Very great summer league. And then you got Wood, 5, 1, 1, and um, one and 2. And solid for him. Reddish, he had a pretty bad game. I saw that. 1, 1, and 2, and 2. And 2. Return um, turnovers as well. Yeah. <laughs> Torreon Prince, um, 2, 1 steal, and 1 rebound. Hood Shafino. He looked okay from what I watched. I didn't get to see too much, but when he did play, I saw a few highlights from him that were pretty cool. Seven, three, uh, three turnovers, one block, two assists, and six rebounds. Hayes, five, three, and two. Uh, Max Lewis, or uh, Maxwell Lewis, my bad, the guy they just drafted, I believe, out of UC Irvine. Um, five, sorry, five, two, and one, and. You have people that most likely will not make the team here. Castleton, three, one, and five. Fudge, two, and one. Hodge, eight, one, and two. And that's it for the Lakers there. I mean, very diverse scoring for them. That's that's very interesting to see for them going into the season. They have a lot of different scores this year, a lot of different players. I'm interested to see them. And then I'll move on to the Warriors now with who obviously took the win. You have Mr. Wiggins, six, Six and three, Clay Thompson, 10, one block and four rebounds. Looney, four, one block and five rebounds with one assist. Steph, eight, three and two and one. Chris Paul, six and five and four. Kaminga, 24, four and eight. Big game out of him. Pachemski, 
11, 4, and 6. Another big game. Moody, 15, 2, and 4. Great to see the young guys playing like this. It's really exciting. Saric, 6, 3, and 4, and 1. Peyton, 4, 1, and 1. Uh, Jackson Davis, 2 blocks, 2 steals, and 1 assist and 1 rebound. Robinson, 8, 1, 1, and 4. Williams, 7, 7, 1, 1, and 4. Four rebounds, sorry about that. Or in three rebounds, sorry about that. Quinones, two. Two, two turnovers, one assist, three rebounds. Gay, four. Four, four in, yeah, four and four, solid. Five, one and one. Garuba. What is that? Sorry, that is going to be one block, one steal, and two rebounds for him. And you have for the last but not least, you have Kendrick Davis, like we mentioned. Five. He had – sorry, why does it keep doing this? It keeps, like, loading weird. Five, two, and two. Yeah, so like we said, another diverse scoring from the team right there. That's always great to see. Yeah. I, I like this game a lot. I, again, I think this really showed off the depth of the Warriors, which I think was heavily yeah. in question. Um, Definitely. Again, a lot of their a lot of their bench guys, especially Kaminga, Pajemski, and Moody. It's it's good played, to see Nugent up there. Yeah, and they played significantly against the Lakers second unit, not just the the third yeah, stringers right. in the final like seven minutes. Like they played yeah. most of their time against the good players uh, for LA. So uh, to see kind of uh, to see them show out the way they did was impressive. Again, the biggest thing for me was the energy was there, the perimeter defense was there. And the playmaking was there. Like everyone was moving the ball incredibly well. It was probably overall one of the best showings of Warriors offense or not Warriors offense, Warriors playmaking that I've seen yeah. in a very long time. Just everyone moving the ball well. Um, and that's a good sign. You know, I, like I don't really see many issues with this team. The only issue potentially is the paint defense. Um, but again, Trace Jackson Davis, we're going to have to see how that goes. Uh, he didn't really get tested too many times. He played yeah. a couple uh, – he had a couple possessions against Christian Wood, and he played great defense, but Christian Wood just made some insanely tough shots. He was like – he got triple teamed one of them and just flipped up a, a, a little bit of a hook shot, and it went in. So it's like, what are you going to do there, you know? Um, but uh, right now, yeah, the only question, in my opinion, is that paint defense because other than that, I like what I see. Um, I liked Kaminga. Forget the scoring. I love the fact that he had eight boards. Uh, the biggest thing that uh, the biggest issue Kaminga's had uh, is that the rebounding has never really come along with the athleticism, you know. And now that we're seeing, uh, you know, hopefully we see the stick with the rebounding for him because if he can be like a, a you know a, a big time positive in the per thirty six minutes with rebounding, huge for this team. Yeah. Um, and Usman Garuba, another dude. He only had two boards, but. He was vicious on the glass. There were like four warriors going for a board and he came in and fucking Carmelo Anthony, you know, fuck out of here kind of rebound. So <laughs> it was cool, man. You, I, I like to see that, you know, take the initiative and get and get on the glass there uh, when you're undersized like the Warriors are. And even Pajemski, you know, we had Demon Genza last year. You know, it's not like, you know, we're just, oh, look at the white guys. But, you know, Pajemski is another smaller guard. I think he's only like six, five, but six rebounds. He's a rebounding yeah. guard. He's he like we talked about uh at the draft he had one of the highest verticals of yeah. anyone in the draft so yeah you know definitely. he uses that athleticism to get on the glass uh and he's a good player overall very high iq um one of the highest plus minuses on the night too so um overall thoroughly impressed uh with the warriors the lakers looked solid too um i think the big issue there is uh, for me at least is what's the identity yeah. What is the identity of the Lakers? Because we could say defense. Yeah. But we like, okay, AD, when he's healthy, fantastic defender, one of the best in the league uh, at his position. Jackson Hayes, pretty solid yeah. uh, defensively. Cam Reddish can defend. Where? Where else? Vanderbilt. <laughs> he's a solid defender, but he's better as yeah. a rebounder, you know? Like, that my question is is where where are the Lakers going to hang their hats here? That's that's what I that's what that's what's in question for me because I think they've got the scoring, I think they've got the shot creation, and I do think they have the playmaking to to get by. Um, the playmaking I think is a bit questionable. 
in my opinion, because a lot of the guys uh, are, are pick and roll dudes like Shafino. He's kind of pick and roll, but also transition because of the athlete that he is. Um, but the ball is going to be in LeBron's hand a lot, and it's going to be in Anthony Davis's hand a lot. So similar to what we've seen with uh, Dallas, that three point percentage for the Lakers is going to need to be really good. And you know they did shoot thirty nine and a half percent today. Solid. That's very good. Um, yeah. But yeah, to me, it's all about you know where where's the identity going to be? We know the Warriors' identity. Push yeah. the pace and defend. That's always their identity. It's never been anything different. Um, so, I, you know, it, we're going to have to see with the Lakers if this whole thing can work um, because they do have the talent to make it work. So, um, yeah. Uh, any other thoughts here? No, That's definitely. It. I think this is one of the better, better preseason showings that I can remember the last few years. This is a very fun game, like you said, a team yeah. that knocked up another team in the playoffs. A rivalry, I would say. Definitely more of a rivalry now with LeBron being there. It's been that way, I'd say. But yeah, they have history. I would say these two teams have history over the last few years. So this is a fun game. I, it's interesting to see them play in the regular season. I think we're going to see some heated matchups between them. I think they Big play time. pretty good too, but we'll see. I mean, they got they got stuff going on opening night. I, both these teams, they got – Big schedules coming up. They got hard, hard schedules coming up first beginning of the season. So it's yeah. good to see the Warriors came out and they played very well. I'm, I'm interested to see them play the Suns, I believe, on opening night. So, yep, 24th. We'll see, we'll see man. They're going to have, there's going to be some great games. And the Lakers playing the Nuggets on opening night in Denver. Yep. So, both teams can have their hands full. Yeah. They got their hands full. And they're, to quote unquote, I think the Warriors do look a lot better this year than they did last year coming in. I think, def wise, they have. The young guys are starting to step up. I think you're definitely going to see more minutes out of Moody and probably Kaminga. I think, like you said, Garuba, he's going to get minutes here and there too. I think there's definitely a lot of positives going into the season for the Warriors, more so than last year. You, you're off of drama. You should have a better locker room culture. You yep. really should. I don't see a reason why you wouldn't. But I think this year, it might be another year where we see the Warriors finish top three again. I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, yeah. I think the urgency is there. That's the biggest thing is I think the urgency is there. Um, it does feel like, you know, last season didn't even feel like a last dance kind of thing. It just felt like, a, Jesus, this thing's a mess. This yeah. year feels like a last dance. This feels I, like I, uh, we've got one more like punch in us and I don't think they're going to jeopardize it. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, I think we're starting to enter the last years of the Warriors dynasty. I think it's coming up. I, I think our, I think maybe we got two or three more years of this and then maybe it's maybe it's done. I, I think unless the young guys are just that good, but yeah. It's Steph Curry, man. No one can really replicate someone like that. So I mean Yeah. It, we'll see. I, I think it's a very positive way to start preseason. I know it's preseason, you can't put too much weight in the preseason, but I, I think it's very positive to see this for the Warriors. I think this is you you, you punch the Lakers in the mouth. You're the first one to strike. Uh, it's interesting. We're gonna see. I think it's gonna be a very fun Western conference this year. I think it's stacked. Yeah, the Warriors are gonna have their hands full. Lakers are gonna have their hands full. I don't think it's gonna be. It's not gonna be a cakewalk for either team. West is tough. Yeah, you're not gonna be a three seed by just not being. You're gonna have to be at least. I don't even know. You're gonna have to win fifty plus games. It's gonna be. It, West is gonna be ridiculous. I wouldn't be surprised if we see like six through twelve have like forty plus wins like easily. It wouldn't shock yeah. me. All right, man. Before we uh, lose the time here, yeah. Yeah. Big, big, big stuff going on. Drew Holiday to the Celtics. So a uh, lot of stuff going on. Uh, we'll be back with another video uh, covering a lot more of the preseason stuff, specifically yeah. Thunder Warriors stuff going on uh, next weekend. Um, other than that, man, as always, in the moment hoops in the description. Uh, been a little bit longer for an upload this time, but uh, if you guys do enjoy the content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Same over on their channel. And um, enjoy the enjoy the big football game tonight, and uh, we will see you guys next weekend. Thank yeah. you, and peace.